I think we best start back up again. Um, just because of the light, we'll try to do it in cinema mode for the five minutes and then I'll put the lights up for the questions and answers. Are you, are you ready? Yep. Okay, three, two, one, off you go. All right, uh, so we are group seven and um, inspired by one of Jacob's uh, presentations. We're gonna talk about us being at the bowling alley and how we're gonna make a strike. And so first of all, our product, we call it the protector. And what it does is um, that it's a software that you can install where you need security or you need to have an overview of where people are or guests are. So it's kind of a guest locator. And just to prove that this can actually be done just by um, uh, just by analyzing some video clips. This is, uh, you can see that they can count people walking in even though they are in a crowd and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I'll just. And how to actually make this, uh, we, we need to start at the bottom actually, how to develop this. And we need to make this mock-up, we need to make this software um, and we need to find out if there's any patents or something like that that we need to consider. Uh, and we need to, to really make a nice code so this software will actually work. And we would like to team up with somebody who uh, provides soft, uh, security solutions for, for businesses that could need this. Um, and we would like to set up uh, some, a prototype and maybe we would like to start up with um, a full scale system and maybe like a small company and then from there we can go full on to the big companies. But Morden will tell you a lot more about that. So once we get this uh, bowling ball going, it will hit um, the pins and the first pin would be cruise liners. Uh, recently in January, there was um, an accident with Costa Concordia. It capsized, as you can see on the picture, and uh, 36 people were killed. It was a big disaster. So now there's a lot of focus on uh, cruise ship security. Um, so it's a good time to launch a product like this. Um, we want to aim for new ships uh, being built, um, so it can be a safety standard. Um, and then it can spread out to older ships because it can be implemented on uh, existing uh, boats since uh, there's no need for new hardware. And um, as you can see, the budget is very large. Um, the ships are very expensive and there's a lot of them. Furthermore, there's an add-on with, um, um, you can say, uh, yeah, Intel. It's um, customer uh, intelligence. You can track where people are going to avoid um, lines and stuff like that. After that, we want to aim for uh, hotels, high-class high five-star hotels uh, with the large budgets. Um, and further, furthermore, you can also use the, uh, the intel on the hotels. And then uh, large hotel change, uh, which is a very big uh, market. Um, after that, we can also focus on um, apartments and office buildings. And then if we, uh, if we look at the intel part and not the security part, we can also use this product on galleries, sports centers, theme parks, and retail business. So we have some, um, some barriers. Um, and uh, one thing is if we have to use this technology for, um, for safety and security, it has to be very accurate because we want to rule out areas um, where we don't have to search for people, so it has to be very precise. Uh, licensing and IP, it's um, an already existing technology, so um, we only have the idea, so we need to protect the idea of how to use the technology, so that's a problem. Um, mark differentiation, um, yeah, our um, competitors have mainly focused on um, hardware because they also sell cameras and only for Intel purposes where we want to only to sell the software solution 
and focus on security. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Okay. First question. What is the reason, what is the economical reason to invest in the school? Who are going, I know the passengers are going to be happy, but who are going to be happy about paying for it? It's mainly to, um, to get cheaper uh, insurance for the, the cruise ships and the hotel companies. Um, but do an insurance company at all are paying for personal laws in that way, do they at all care? I know they are, they are paying for fire uh, destruction or heating destruction, but personal laws, is that a part of having a building over a ship? Uh, we haven't looked, looked into the specific um, insurance laws yet, but uh, we'll have to do that for sure. It is. It is? Okay. Okay, question here. Um, I think it's a great idea just from looking at supermarkets when they you know, when you walk into a supermarket, they take a, a beep or whatever they, they tie up, they call it that. You know, just for, for numbers of how many people are going to the supermarket. So, I mean, this idea is, is cool. If you did it to hotels, it would be just sort of the same idea, right? Except, why would a hotel install it? And this is obviously the safety issue. So, but I don't know whether the technology would be just the same, or how would you adapt it to patent it? Um, the technology is quite different, because we'll be using... Um, existing um, CCTV, like surveillance cameras that are already installed at the hotel and that means that's a very low cost solution and you don't need to install um, like several sensors or lasers like right now in retail they're using laser technology and it's quite costly um, we, yeah, we looked around and like each unit is 30, 30 to 50,000 krona so um, this, this will be very price competitive and easy to install as well. Um, yeah. How are you going to earn money? Is it that you sell the product or you will charge that service? We will sell the product, so it's you can say it's a one-off, but we'll offer maintenance as well. Um, and you can, we also have these add-ons, so you can install it with the purpose of safety, but then later on you can add on the in customer intel um, which is basically just a software, uh, an extra software. So <coughs> we haven't estimated the price yet, or the cost, so that's something we need to do, look into. In, is, in which cases do you need to know uh, specifically where your users are, or the, the, the people are? Is it only during a fire, or is, it, is this only valuable in a case of evacuation because why, 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 would, uh, why would an insurance company give you a discount if this is something that w is, will rarely happen like it's not, a, it's not you don't have a lot of evacuations on, on big cruise ships you may, might have it on drills but I don't think they will give you a discount for having like super precise drills but they will. Uh, an insurance company will go out and it will check, for instance, a hotel or a, sh uh, or a cruise ship. It will check out the security level and from that on it will estimate your insurance policy and your insurance fee. So you will actually get a lower insurance uh, policy, policy by having extra security. So that's the first reason why to get this. The second one is that you can get the add-on so you will know exactly where your guests or your customers are at a certain time and from that on you can develop maybe changing the the buffet or whatever maybe put ads somewhere where you didn't believe or you can uh, do it with maintenance you will see okay there's a lot of people walking here so maybe we need to replace the carpet a bit more often so there's a numerous of uh, uh, reasons why to get this software and not only security ones but that will come like when we roll down the pins. You know it's illegal to supervise your, uh, your workers unless it's in some, some sort of criminal. Uh, you, can, you, can, you can use camera data 
uh, in the there's there's different laws for the camera dancer, so you would have a different a difficult time sort of uh, surveying your 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 users in your canteen and in. Okay. Okay. Point taken. Also, it's possible to uh, make this uh, without being able to point out what person just moved by. So it's just one person. So you can make this with black and white pictures. That is, yeah. But still, it's are, you, are you certain you're allowed to survey and count numbers and where people are positioned? Uh, it's a good point that you you might have to get around that law. Um, last question, go out the back. I just want to ask me, uh, I don't see how this uh, approach to these cameras can acquire emergencies. How, function, how it functions. Yeah, how, how it functions. Isn't there a big risk of getting destroyed? Okay. Uh, during the emergency. Well, basically, we'll have a backup system. This would be like connected to the main system in a reception or something. And how it works is it. How to explain? It actually has a demo in MATLAB already and has like an optical flow, so it indicates direction. And it sees like, uh, has a background picture, and it indicates movement from the background. Okay, but it, I'm guessing behind this question is what happens when it's filled with smoke, when there's bellowing flames coming up? It, can it still work yeah. in that situation? Yeah, or it, yeah, how the yeah in, in case the electrical circuits, like we're gonna have a backup system uh, for the electrical circuits, and that exists already. Um, so basically, when, when the main power goes off, you'll still have it running. And there might be some cameras which are not working, but still, if the majority of what cameras are working, um, it will still give you some clue of where people are located, and you would know how many people are where before the emergency mm. occurs. Um, and that, that would enable you to optimize your, um, yeah. That's a good point. Your evacuation procedure. Friend? <clears throat> there has been efforts by the police to try and uh, identify people and look at, uh, you know, trying to find burglars or criminals. I mean, is, have you looked at all at uh, what, what other people have done in this field? I mean, what, what, what methods uh, of, of e exploiting <coughs> cameras to gather information? Is there, have you tried to find out? Well, yeah, um, there's a lot of applications out there, and it's mainly retail. So you have, like, loitering sensors. So if people are walking around in the same area for too long, then you can call the security guard, and he can see if anyone's about to steal something from your shop. But it's mainly been applied in retail, and you have a lot of sophisticated and expensive um, ways of doing it. So we're going to try to do something which is simple, easy and, and can therefore be applied in, in other areas as well. So, so um, there's been a few uh, notes. I think uh, your uh, sort of the, the slide you have with the technology rollout is very interesting. There's not a timeline on it. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not a says where in, in what order you're, you're proposing to do things. Uh, so what I would like to know is uh, how, how does one prototype this? How does one test it in a credible manner? Uh, because uh, it's very hard to uh, set up a system, you know, from day one. Let's say you have the cameras working, you have the algorithm working from day one and, you know, have a, a credible test case. How the hell does one do that? Well, we, <laughs> we're going to try to do, um, we think that a prototype could be good to implement in a gallery or museum. Mm -hmm. So, because you, you know how to zero it, like when yeah. at the end of the day you set it to zero and then you can count people coming in and out of the, sure. the gallery. So we're gonna just put up a very small scale solution um, at first before we implement the large scale and cruise ships with 6,000 people. And, and can, I, I think the other can I just ask number six, uh, group six to come down to the front to uh, upload their presentation while we finish the questions? So. And maybe it would also uh, be a good idea to uh, take on the, the comments from up there and maybe do uh, a test on the robustness of the algorithm by you know setting up a camera and just testing that and you know putting up a fire, uh, mm -hmm. you know putting in some yeah. smoke, seeing if it still works. When does doesn't it work? So maybe you should, that would be another uh, you know a test of the basic technology as well. Yes. Uh, that's more of a comment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's actually cool. in relation to your project with the with the museums. If you used it instead in museums, and you placed uh, spots that would. Do the same thing for the for the for the pictures. 
So if if it the, if they if it moved in the cameras, then then the camera would tell something and, and sound the alarm because then you would you would That's you, know, you have like a small point in the in the corner of the window, and then you would if somebody moved it or moved it away, the cameras would tell some central and, yeah. and then it would even be able to tell that guy is moving with the picture right That's now. That's a good so point. Get... That's yet another application. Okay, okay good idea. Yeah. Um, and I'll just throw one quick question in, which is. Um, who would actually be operating this system? So let's say it's in a hotel or a halls of residence who, who's actually using it and finding well, out where people are. In the cruise ships, there's some secu security guards already. Okay. So that they would, of course, be operating it. But then in case of the hotels, it would be quite large scale. So we would expect them to have some uh, personnel in charge of security okay. already. Mm. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs>
have gathered the main focus areas of our business plan, starting with our position in the market, what is new about our product, and uh, why do we have a competitive advantage. We are also looking into the relevant industry factors, like competitors or possible partners, the activities that we have to perform in order to promote and advertise our product. We are also interested in uh, further expansion in the, fu in the future. And uh, we also have to take into consideration the resources and the cost of performing all those activities. And there are some barriers to success. It's, it's a nice to have product, but not need to have, because it's an, an improvement of an existing uh, product. The risk of lacking uh, capital to set up the company. Uh, we have to have some money to, to start the production and performance activities. So we have to convince the investors uh, our product value. Example, bank. Uh, there's also a risk of lacking licenses and uh, permits to set, set up the company. Risk of low demand. And um, it can also be imitated by other due of low level of technology. So we have to uh, protect, by, uh, protect our product by uh, patent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Got the back. I'm just wondering, uh, uh, when you have a smartphone, when you measure the wind speeds close, uh, close to the ground, uh, there's a lot of turbulence. How will you, how will you get uh, reliable data on wind speeds? Yeah, well, the thing is, um, the profile, the wind makes a certain profile when it comes over the terrain. So what we can do is we can actually put in um, a figure saying this terrain is, is with high trees, or this terrain is with buildings, so this terrain is pretty flat. And then we can make the phone actually calculate the wind at different, different heights. But of course, you can't stand just behind a tree and do a measurement and expect it to do well. So you have to go out and a somewhat open space. But we can correct the profile and we can predict uh, how the wind is going to be at a higher altitude. Okay. Uh, I noticed that you were playing a prototype. Um, I don't know if you have a prototype. Sure. Sure. We, um, we have made a, this, this, this is our uh, what's called? Uh, existing prototype. Uh, we have thought about making it much smaller than this. This one uh, uses magnets, but instead we have uh, the one we showed up there actually uses the uh, microphone plug and it has a um, small electric motor which makes signals that the microphone can detect. So it could be much smaller than this one and possibly even more accurate than our prototype we have here. Uh, sorry, I don't have real time for displaying. Okay, at the back. Want to patent? I guess there must already be some patents concerning measuring wind speed. So, is there some feature of yeah, your product that you want to patent? Well, uh, at least originally uh, we thought about um, this one. Uh, we haven't seen anyone use the magnetic field uh, changes from a additional device and connect that to a smartphone and use the digital compass. But uh, we are not sure. How, how it's going to work out with our new solution. Okay, Lars. Just uh, put a small question mark with the, with the mark size. At least wind surfers these days seem to be much smaller segment than kite surfers, so 20 million worldwide. I would uh, question mark that. I think uh, wind surfers would be half the kite surfing. Well, of course, it's hard to estimate these size because kite servers and wind servers don't usually go to clubs. They just do it by themselves usually. So these are estimates of the internet and they may be wrong. I'm not sure, but it's what's the best data that I could find. I also think kite surfing's a bit of a Danish thing. Mm. Um, I think in the UK, wind surfing is still much more popular, I think. Yeah. Is it, uh, just a question about your process down there. Uh, why did you choose the two plates instead of three? Um, it's for packaging, so it's uh, much easier to have in your bag. And 
there are disadvantages that in some position it cannot start itself, but that's really not a problem if you just hold it up and turn it around, it will just adjust to the speed. Quality is, is it just as good? It is just as good. It's still, uh, yeah, still linear. Actually, like the oh, the three um, cups. It's a nice example of integrated product development there. Um, yeah. You? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, now you, you you have this add-on that you're going to place on your mobile phone. I have two questions to that. Is it one size fits all? And what about range? Because a lot of these things, uh, uh, at least the ones I know about, is sailing. And a lot of the times when you do sailing and when it's hard winds, it's also raining. And I would like to put out my smartphone in the weather while it's raining. I don't think it, I don't think, think it likes it that. Yeah, sure. Um, that is one of the disadvantages of this product is that it's not weather sealed uh, unless your smartphone is. Uh, I actually think we had a slide for some of the differentiating, differentiating stuff. Yeah, we have looked a, a bit into the already existing products and there are a lot of uh, these small handheld uh, products. Um, and of course, one of the main features are that they're watertight because they're meant to use in all kinds of weather. Um, but what could be a possibility for us was to look into uh, there's a lot of uh, cases you can get for your mobile phone for, in order for it to be um, watertight. Um, but we have to make sure that we can still plug this thing in uh, through the case. But I think this is a possibility because we are using the stand-up plug, uh, the mini jack. Uh, sorry, I'm going to have to leave it to one last question here. Okay. Uh, did, you, did you say that the new prototype was based on, on the sound wave disturbances or was it the same concept? In this one, we have uh, two magnets in the bottom. It's a neodymium magnet, which makes a powerful magnetic field. And when this turns around, um, the, the magnetic field center in the smartphone can det detect the changes in the magnetic field. And we just detect the changes, the speed of, of changes. Okay, it's the, it's the same concept with the new one. The, the new one is going to be... Uh, like a, a generator, and you're gonna look at the signal current. Yeah, and yeah. you can see the the main advantage uh, we are getting from going to this new version is that we're gonna be able to detect higher speeds because the the magnometer has a problem with the high speed fluctuations; they can't really detect it. But if we use the input uh, from this uh, sound channel, we can detect at a much higher frequency. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks a lot for this. I think you've been uh, you've gotten pretty far. Uh, I th I'm especially uh, impressed with your uh, with your survey. Uh, I think that's a very good uh, source of info. I would, however, like to uh, hear some more things about your survey. Um, you asked the question: Are they interested? And I think 83% of them were. What exactly did you ask? <laughs> uh, have you have you mentioned anything uh, with regard to price points or you know? Things like that. Uh, how, how much have you gotten into that? Because uh, you know it's, it sounds very impressive, but uh, I, w I wonder if that's going to be the actual sales rate. Uh, sure, sure. Um, the survey were made uh, on for online forums where we ask uh, kite surfers to participate in the survey to help our project, and. Um, we didn't uh, sell any price point. We just simply asked if you would be interested in having uh, a wind measuring device. Mm -hmm. And 83% uh, would like to have this mm -hmm. device on the beach, not uh, knowing what it would cost. Mm -hmm. Can we have a uh, group 12 down to the front to set up, please, while well, we've got the last questions? Brenna? Um, usually for um, patenting, you, you need to have um, uh, a technical effect which is an improvement over what was known. So that would mean that you'd need to do a test showing that your product was better than what existed. And I wondered whether you had thought about uh, what you thought was, uh, what was the state of the art, so that you would, what would you make a comparison with, so that when you gathered data and said, look, mine is better, that you, you, you have something to compare with, that you actually did some tests on the, 
on what existed and, and showed, look, you know, these are the advantages. Is that specifically about the technology there? Yeah. For well, it's, it's going to be hard to, uh, at least for, um, with the mag magnet uh, technology, to make it even better th than what exists. But uh, I, I, we don't know, but I suppose you, the integration with the smartphone is something new. And it's a new idea, so I don't know if, if that is an advantage enough. Well, it could well be. It's just that one should be thinking about, you know, what is it that I'm... You have to nail down exactly what is it the advantage that I'm providing and then, as it were, sell that in, in pattern sense and also business sense, of course. Okay. Yeah. I know guy there was gagging to get a question, so I'll bypass mine and... Uh... Go ahead. Already answered it, but uh, okay, don't worry then. <laughs> but it's your specific why is it better to have a, a, a handheld one instead of the app that is measuring by the microphone? Because it's uh, much more precise and reliable. Do you, um, do you measure wind direction at all? At the moment, uh, we don't measure wind direction, but uh, it's quite easily feasible. Okay. Yeah, I guess the thing is, um, for other applications, it might be interesting. But this market segment we're going into now are not as interested in that direction. Mm -hmm. So for them, it's OK to just hold it up against the wind and estimate the wind direction by the compass of the foam. But, but uh, maybe in the future, if we are going to look into other markets, then it could be interesting to know the direction more accurately. I think you... Um you, you've got a really interesting concept and good technology. Um, I think you could be a little bit further down the line on in terms of nailing down your price, what customers are willing to pay for this, how much it's going to cost to produce this, where you're going to, uh, uh, who you're actually going to charge per app, per hardware, per use, how is it going to work. Uh, but I thought it was a very good presentation nonetheless. Um, thank you very much. Ready, gents? Okay. Three, two, one, go. Yeah, hi, we are group number 12, and we would like to present you today the fully automatic container locking system upgrade. Uh, so, about the handling process and the problem. So, as you can see in the first picture, this is a twist lock, which is a device that connects the containers on the ship and it's placed on the bottom part of the container. Each container has a four twist locks in each corner of it. Uh, the second picture presents a process of uh, unmounting and taking the containers out of the ship. And as you can see, for each container, there is needed always a worker who will manually go there and take, unlock the twist lock and take it off and put it on the ground. As you can see as well, or maybe not that good because of the light, but the twist locks are in a very, very uh, bad condition. Usually they are rusty and therefore they can get very easily stuck. And also there is no much space to have them unload. Usually it's only a space for one finger just to, uh, just to remove them. Uh, you have to bear in mind also that uh, for every additional hour for the ship that is staying in the port, it's about 11,000 krones to pay. And uh, as you can imagine, on average ship, there is around uh, 7,000 containers, four twist locks each, and it can take up to half an hour to try unlock very bad and jam twist locks. So the math is very easy to be done. Uh, that's why our main idea is to provide a product service, which would be an upgrade and refurbish existing fully automatic twist locks. And that should reduce the jamming and therefore save uh, a lot of time. That means money. Um, how we would like to realize our idea? So as you can see, there is a very corroded twist lock, which means that uh, it occurs a friction between the pin and the rest of the housing of the twist lock. And this is something really bad. Uh, the, the main idea is uh, to disassemble and remove the pin from the twist lock. What is very easily to be done, it's enough to unscrew one screw and it's all easy to take off. 
and replace it with the corrosion resistant one. That will reduce the friction and therefore save the time and the problem with the jamming. Uh, we can also use the surface treatment or obviously uh, both of the above mentioned. Thank you. So, uh, our global market in 2010, there was uh, uh, 4,860 container flats. <coughs> Sorry. And uh, SEC users, uh, SEC users, which is the, one of the manufacturers of the twist locks, fully automatic twist locks, they, had, uh, they were providing for 360 shapes. And uh, we, were, we were like, you know, trying to start with uh, one SEC user container shapes and uh, totally there are 14.2 million uh, 20 foot equivalent uh, unit of containers which is like about 6.1 uh, meter long containers and uh, our potential market is from the start it's 1752 TEU which is about 7,800 uh, logs, so 1,752 uh, of these containers with the almost 6.1 meter long. And uh, our potential end market would be 0 0.6 million of them. And, uh, Contact potential partners or contact potential partners or surface treatment facilities, workshops, ports, and contact potential customers. Uh, we should find the price of the fully automatic twist locks also, and uh, what's the operation cost, how's the product marketed. So our barriers are violating the patents, and patent not probably strong enough for our patent. Uh, existing warranty or service deal from vendor is too good probably and rules and regulations uh, high entry cost uh, a small profit per unit of each twist locks and design of uh, fully automatic twist lock to accommodate for various situation in the ship because uh, in the past they had some problem since they had uh, these twist locks so thank you okay thank you very much <clears throat> Do you have a first question? Uh, you said you were going to refurbish the, the actual locks, but what about the containers then? Did that also have an effect? Do they get corroded as well? Uh, if, the, if the containers get corroded? I mean, yeah, we, we have the first section, which is the actual uh, the, lock, and then the other part that's on the container. Do they corrode as well that you could refurbish uh, them as the, well? The, the container is not really the problem. The, the, the thing is that they have to put their finger in the lock and press it down, and if it's corroded on both uh, surfaces, it will be very hard for your finger to... It, if you get the pin down, it will be easy to get it out, even if the container is corroded. Some of your barriers was, I think, uh, were concerning the price of the, the lock or something could be due to that. Have you thought about how high your price should be to get over those barriers? Yeah, it uh, depends on, yeah. We have found uh, some uh, simpler locks than uh, this, and they go for around 600 uh, kroners. So we expect that a new twist lock will be, uh, or one of these kinds would be more expensive. And we need to be below that, uh, that price to be yeah, uh, reasonable to uh, take into account, or they would just buy uh, brand new ones. Below what price? Below 600? Yeah, we, we need to be uh, below 600. Okay. Yeah. What, what to say about, about that, we also tried to estimate how it will be the payback time for the customer if they buy this uh, the system for upgrading. So. If you knew that our system worked and it will not be a problem in the future, then we could compute the time. Then I think 
we could get about uh, I don't know, four, four years in payback time if they use the system to upgrade it uh, and still have uh, no money on use them all. Okay. How much time is saved? Is that, is that only the time when it's not working that you save or do you save more time than before? Uh, what I understand that if you say that you, know, you save one hour in the harbor and you also save save one hour uh, of sailing, so it's only 3,000, 11,000 uh, Danish kroners you save, you also save about 20, 25,000, I think it was, just for sailing. Yeah, but you only save money when the problem is not the, so what's the main difference? It's, it's still the same process, I suppose. You still need to go in and take it off, but it's only, you only save, your company only saves money if if the old ones don't work and they replace them with this one. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right, that's right. But also it's uh, every second counts actually, so one of the, uh, some of them are uh, jumped more than the other ones, and uh, as I told you, sometimes it happened that they are jumped so badly that it takes up to half an hour, but sometimes even if we can save few seconds for taking them off, even if they take like 30 seconds and now they can do it in 15. If you sum up the numbers for the containers, which are really huge, you can spare a lot of time anyway. Wouldn't that be a sales then? Because you would say, you, that would be a greater sales argument than saying when it does go on. Right here? Uh, yeah, uh, you can say that it might be uh, the purpose of also, the purpose of, of this contraction to corrode before the, to be the, the part that corrodes instead of, for instance, the container. Because it is in, in, environment, in an environment where there's a lot of uh, corrosion happening. So it might be uh, a bit of the idea that this part corrodes instead of the container, which would be a cost for the customer. Just if you have considered where the corrosion is happening. Um, yeah, we actually have been on the port and we have seen when they put this container off, they use a lot of force just to put it off. So, and that was what we asked on the port, there's no problem with the cross-pollination and between the containers and the twist lock. It's only the twist lock that's the problem. Verena, Jakob? Yeah, Verena. just to, uh, I, I think the, the question up there tries to clarify that maybe it's like uh, supposed to be a a sacrificial component. Uh, instead of you know sacrificing the container, maybe this component is is the the part you sacrifice because that's easier to you know change and things like that. Um, I, I was just interested, and in that's uh, it's it's good that we have some some patent companies uh, at the table here. Um, you propose uh, some solutions, some some uh, surface treatment, and also changing the pin and, and refurbishing the twi pin, or actually doing another uh, pin of another material. Could this be done in another way, uh, and then do to, to 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 do the essentially the same? And I'm just thinking on this on sort of from a patient standpoint because how can you protect this in a in an efficient way? Because you can't protect everything. You need to figure out is your solution the one that does this the best, and uh, okay. can someone else copy it by doing something like slightly different? Have you thought about that? I think it will uh, will be easy for maybe the company like SEC to maybe copy copy our idea, uh, but we have also been waiting for to talk with uh, about patents, uh, so we we would like to maybe change our product or maybe uh, make a patent about it. Um, so yeah. Okay. Yeah. And also in this um, industry, there's a lot of patents, so I think just to have a product, you have to have a patent. So we need to have a patent before we can make the product. Um, the, 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 you, essentially, you're changing the materials that you're using. Yeah, one of the, one of the solution would be uh, to change the materials. Is, is there any possibility of changing the design in such a way that it's easier to open? I mean, have you thought about that? Or? As long as it uh, fits in the housing, for instance, then uh, and still fulfill the the need of uh, logging the containers uh, or the logs, and then uh, we we can change the design as much as we we want. 
Actually, the basic idea was at the first to slide to make an upgrade to be possible to appear on the market and to show ourselves and upon gathering some money on doing this process, then start working on the completing new design. Yeah, actually, yeah, for now it's about the surface treatment, but uh, for the long term, because uh, there's four manufacturers and of fully automatic uh, device, but. Uh, since it has been in the market, there uh, has been increased in the number of uh, accidents and ships that uh, they lost the containers and we have been thinking about uh, changing the design actually also, but that's for the long term. Who is your, uh, who are you selling this product to? Is it the container owners, the goods owners, the ship owners, the shipyard? Who owns it? It is uh, the ship owners. Uh, it is actually them who, uh, who owns the, the twist locks. So okay. they bring them everywhere. And then uh, we, would, uh, we have uh, two different uh, points of uh, selling it, like well, only the pills, uh, selling the pills to the, to the ships. And then uh, they would uh, uh, exchange them when they would, uh, would uh, not work anymore, the locks. Uh, but we could also take all the locks on the harbor, uh, when they come in the harbor, and then just take the locks and then give them new locks uh, immediately. So that's the way of doing it. Are the people who own the ship and work on the ship the people who are actually operating this product? Or is it done by the shipyard? Uh, so the, the people shipyard is actually operating uh, uh, the product. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, it, you just got to be slightly careful of that. If it's the shipyard that's going to benefit, but your customer is the ship owner, mm -hmm. you've got to make sure that the value is transferred. Yeah. Um, and you just have to be a bit clever about how you do that. Yeah. Um, you can respond if, you, if you've thought about that or you've got a clever way of doing it. Well, the value for the ship owner would be that they would be dogging for shorter time and don't have these uh, <coughs> uh, extensions of uh, state because of faulty locks. Okay. And the port, uh, the port workers, they would, uh, yeah, get get a, an easier time unlocking the uh, the locks. Okay. Problem solved. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, so for the four teams who haven't presented yet, if you come and load your uh, presentations up on the laptop, we're going to take a five minute break and be ready for five past. Um, sorry, it's a tight schedule, but...